So fixing the insulin resistance is essential for fixing all of these diseases, whether it's heart disease, whether it's diabetes, whether it's cancer, and for that matter, also de dementia. We've learned that your, your brain gets insulin resistant. So that's um, pathway one. And I don't take anything away from that. And I think that pathway one is very valid. And it is the way that obesity leads to insulin resistance. Because when you're putting all of that glucose into muscle, you're also putting it into fat. And so the muscle, in the intramyocellular lipid and the, uh, you know, the adiposity, you know, go hand in hand. And they're being driven by the high insulin. Okay. But I think there's a, another way. In fact, I think there's you know, uh, uh, two ways, but the same substrate that leads to insulin resistance via a shortcut that doesn't need the muscle to be an intermediate. And that is to attack the liver directly. So what attacks the liver directly? And the answer is, well, anything that's metabolized exclusively within the liver to generate too much energy. And there are two things that we as Americans are exposed to pretty consistently that generate liver fat and therefore insulin resistance at the level of the liver. And they are alcohol and fructose. And alcohol and fructose, for lack of a better analogy, are the same. The only difference between alcohol and fructose is that alcohol is used by the central nervous system and fructose is only, it not used by the neurons, but is used by the astrocytes. So it doesn't cloud your judgment, but it gives you some brain fog anyway. It's just not as significant as alcohol, okay? So fructose and alcohol are metabolized in the liver and also in the brain, and you end up with an increased amount of acetyl-CoA, and acetyl-CoA, normally gets burned in the mitochondria. But when it's fructose, you basically overwhelm your ability to burn them in mitochondria. And it turns out that fructose and alcohol for that matter, inhibit three enzymes that are necessary for normal mitochondrial function. It inhibits AMP kinase, which is the fuel gauge on the liver cell. It's the enzyme that tells the cell to make more mitochondria so you can generate more ATP, more energy inside the cell. It inhibits ACAD-L, acyl-CoA dehydrogenase long chain, which is a, an enzyme that cleaves fatty acids into two carbon fragments so that they can be burned in the liver. And finally, it inhibits CPT1, carnitine palmitoyl transferase 1, the enzyme which regenerates carnitine, and carnitine is the shuttle mechanism by which the fatty acids get into the mitochondria for burning in the first place. So each of those steps, the AMP kinase, the AKL, and the CPT1, are necessary for normal energy metabolism in the liver. And fructose poisons them all. In particular, it poisons that AMP kinase. It actually kills it. It kills the enzyme. So you have to make a new one to take its place. And that takes time. And so the more fructose you consume, <coughs> the more mitochondrial dysfunction you have. And when you have mitochondrial dysfunction, that signals the pancreas, hey, my mitochondria are not working. I need to take the edge off these mitochondria. I need to store. I need to divert. And so the pancreas has to make more insulin to drive the pathway for fat de development and storage. And that's called de novo lipogenesis, DNL. And that's how you turn sugar into fat. It can be glucose into fat or fructose into fat, but fructose is a preferential lipogenic substrate. And fructose makes seven times more fat than glucose does.